Hi everyone, so I've decided to film a video all about like my YouTube channel and how I started and the equipment that I use and just any questions that you guys had about like starting a channel. I do get quite a few comments of people saying that they would love to start a channel but they don't know how to get started or they're like scared to start and I totally understand that. I had been wanting to start a YouTube channel since I was like in middle school when I first started watching makeup videos. Old beauty YouTube was just so fun and I like really wanted to be a part of that and I wanted to really start my channel then but I just like didn't know where to get started and I guess like I also was like a little bit insecure and I didn't want to like make videos and I guess like get made fun of or something and I remember trying to film videos and watching them back and just feeling like so insecure and I hated the way that I like looked when I spoke like I didn't like how like my mouth moved and I just hated the way that I sounded um, and it just made me like really insecure but I got over that and I just like don't care anymore so yes I do wish that I started my channel way way earlier than I did but you know we're here now I'm very happy with how my channel is right now but I did have you guys ask me questions on my YouTube channel and on my Instagram so I'm gonna go through those right now Michaela Hill wants to know how do you deal with hate and how do you stay motivated hate comments were something that I struggled with when I started getting a lot of views like a couple of months ago. So I have the half drugstore, half Glossier video up on my channel and I made that video just because I felt like it was something that a lot of people would be interested in. Like I was interested in finding Glossier dupes myself because I think finding dupes for things is like so fun. It's just like something fun for me to do um, and I feel like Glossier is such like a trendy fun brand that a lot of people don't have access to so I wanted to make a video comparing drugstore dupes to Glossier and because I am a Glossier rep several people on that video got very upset that I made a video like that they voiced their opinion in not the nicest way and it was just very frustrating to read comments about me where people judged my character when none of what they were saying was true but then people would like be agreeing with them and stuff and then there were people who were calling me like very snobby on the video when in reality if you watch that video I say throughout the video that the drugstore side and the Glossier side are like very comparable there's not a whole lot of difference and like I stay fairly neutral through the video in my opinion but dealing with that was very overwhelming for me and honestly how I deal with those types of comments is I just delete them. I of course keep the comments that say like wow the drugstore side looks so much better than the Glossier side or that they were like surprised by how good the drugstore side looks like I of course keep those comments up because everyone is entitled to their own opinion but the comments that are judging my character just because I am a Glossier rep I do delete those just because they're really not true but of course if someone finds me biased and would like to voice their opinion in like a kind way I do keep that comment up but I've also found that negativity attracts negativity and if I do leave up one nasty comment someone else is going to see that comment and feel comfortable commenting another nasty comment and it's just like a cycle of ugliness so I do like to nip it in the butt and delete the comment when I see it sometimes I will comment back if I just feel like defending myself but a lot of times I do just delete it, um, but I also don't get a ton of hate. I am a very small channel. People comment on my voice a lot being annoying, but like that doesn't bother me. Like I, I have the voice that I have and I can't do anything about it. But yeah, sorry, that was kind of a long answer, but that's kind of how I deal with it. It was just like the first time that I had ever had to deal with something like that and it was like upsetting to me, um, but not anymore. She also asked, how do I say motivated? literally because of you guys like I just am so motivated to create content right now because I finally have people watching and wanting to see things from me and I have interactions now like 
My whole big thing for wanting to start a YouTube channel was because I wanted to create a community for myself where I can have people watching my things and commenting about the things that I'm talking about so that I can respond to them and we can develop relationships together and I could just like talk about the things that I love with people like all over the world and like that's finally happening right now so I feel so motivated to keep going. So Casey Schmidt wants to know how did you figure out what equipment to get and how did you learn to edit etc. So I use a Canon T5i and I bought that camera because a lot of YouTubers use that camera like at the time I think they've probably all upgraded but this one works fine for me um, and it was quite expensive so I'm not going to like just buy a new camera and my dad did split it with me because he knew that I really really wanted to get into posting videos on YouTube so he just decided to kind of invest in that for me which was really kind of him but I can leave the link down below of like my camera that I use and my mic that I use my mic is like very very cheap um, and then my camera came with like a bunch of stuff it came with like a tripod and like other things I really just use the tripod and then I also have a ring light honestly I don't know where my ring light is from but I don't use it as much as I used to use a ring light I rely a lot on like my natural Natural lighting so I sit in front of a window that's why I sit on the floor because I, it's like right in front of a window and like my background is very clear and clean so there's not like a whole lot going on in the background which is how I prefer it and then how did I learn to edit I really just taught myself I recently well not super recently like several months ago finally got Final Cut Pro if you are a student Apple does this feature where you can get Final Cut Pro and a bunch of other like apps for very cheap I don't use Final Cut Pro for like all that it's worth just because I really don't know how to I've tried to watch a few videos before but it's just a little bit confusing to me but what I do like is all of the like text features that I can get on there um, iMovie is like a little bit more limiting with what you can add as far as like text on videos I don't know it's just a little bit more flexible I guess with that so that's why I prefer using Final Cut Pro um, but to start out I definitely did use iMovie and it served its purpose but I kind of just figured all of that out myself and there's a ton a ton of videos on YouTube that you can watch and I never do very fancy editing I just like I don't know I would like to but also I just feel like that would be so much work and I know like the content is way more important than the editing so I would rather focus on just like popping out good content for you guys rather than like spending time trying to do like a bunch of fancy editing things plus sometimes that can be like a little bit overwhelming you know when there's like a lot of music and like things on the screen and I don't know I'm just trying to pop out makeup videos for you guys you know anonymous AA <laughs> wants to know how did you gain subscribers and get monetized the whole gaining subscribers thing I don't really know how I started gaining subscribers so rapidly I do think it has a lot to do with my consistency in posting and also I post a lot of videos that I would want to see personally so I know there are a lot of people that would also want to see those videos so I knew there wasn't a lot of videos on YouTube comparing Glossier to like another brand so I wanted to start that up and I feel like that's gotten me a lot of subscribers and also I believe the drugstore versus Glossier video was like on a recommended page for a lot of people and that's how I got a lot of subscribers which was awesome like as soon as that video kind of got a little bit more um, acknowledgement that's when a lot of my videos started doing really well and it's just been like a really awesome cycle since then so I guess how I gain subscribers is really just making sure that I post videos consistently and I don't want to say like I post interesting videos but I definitely try and create content that I know people would be like curious about because like I know I would be curious about it you know what I mean so like I make videos that like I know I would want to watch so I know for sure that like there's other people out there that would also want to watch those videos and then she also wants to know how I got monetized so when I first started my YouTube channel which was about three years ago I started my freshman year of college 
I made this like stupid tape contour video after I saw Huda Beauty do it like on her Instagram or something and it like low-key went kind of viral like like I made that video and then I made a couple other videos and I kind of just like stopped giving my YouTube channel attention at all I ended up like a couple months later like returning back to my channel and I was like holy shit like I have so many freaking views on this video all of a sudden and then I checked my like YouTube um, email and I had like a bunch of emails about it like people wanting to like buy the video so that they could put their own ads I don't know I don't know if people still do that anymore but I actually ended up selling that video for like $680 but I didn't know what the heck I was doing and I was like sure like I don't care about this two minute tape contour video like you could have it but after I got like a ton of views on that I think after like you get a certain amount of views on your channel, YouTube does give you the option to monetize your stuff. So that's just how I got monetized, I think. I honestly don't know. Taria, I think that's what her name is, Taria Victoria, says, How long did it take you to start seeing growth and at what level do you feel comfortable reaching out to brands? Kind of several years, I guess. I have been posting videos on YouTube for a really, really long time. And it was only until like a couple of months ago where I started seeing like a really large amount of growth on my channel. And it's just been so exciting since. Like I have been so excited about it and like proud about it. Like I tell a lot of people about my YouTube channel now, whereas before I wouldn't really tell that many people about it but I'm super comfortable t talking about it now like in person. And I think it also has a lot to do with the fact that I did start posting videos on YouTube that were a little bit more true to myself. Not that I would post videos that like I wasn't proud about before, but I kind of feel like I posted more types of videos that I thought other people would like rather than I posting videos that like I would like, which I think totally changes like the type of content that you create for your channel and it like creates a niche for yourself. So yeah, I definitely saw like a correlation with the type of content that I was posting and when I started growing my channel. Something to think about if you are wanting to create a channel for sure. And then at what level did you feel comfortable reaching out to brands? I've never reached out to a brand personally. I know like I will tag brands and stuff when I post about them on my Instagram, but I've never reached out to them and been like, hi, like I really like your stuff. I would be interested in like receiving PR or something. I'm not even on any brand's PR list except for Glossier. They will send me new launches. And then Ellie Williams would like to know, how do you budget for your videos? And is the goal to get more sponsored content and what YouTubers inspire you? So the budget for my videos is none. Um, I'm really fortunate to work at Ulta, so I get a lot of my stuff very, very discounted. And I also plan my videos like around sales. And then like the Florence by Mills brand, I'm going to purchase tomorrow and I plan on using my points to purchase that. So that's kind of like the budgeting that I do for my videos. And then like anything that I make from my Glossier link and from my YouTube channel, I do put back like a ton of that into my YouTube channel. So yeah, I guess that's kind of how I spend my money. And is the goal to get more sponsored content? No, that is not a goal of mine, but I wouldn't like pass down the opportunity to do a sponsored video if it was something that I like wanted to do. But like Curology reached out to me a few weeks ago and they wanted to do a sponsored video but I had never used Curology before and I also had been really enjoying my Ordinary skincare line and I had them send me like a trial kit for me to try out but honestly I haven't tried it at all. So like I'm not motivated by sponsored content and it's like really super rare that I get sponsored opportunities. What's most important to me is that like I can build my community and be able to create the content that I want to create and create content for you guys. So to answer her question, is the goal to get more sponsored content? No, that would be really freaking cool, but that's not like what's important to me and that's not what I'm striving towards. And then what YouTubers inspire you? I used to feel really inspired by Kali Kaiser and Lindsay Rem. I really liked the style of videos that they put out. Oh, and then I really like, um, what is her name? Rohini? 
I think it is. I'll leave her down below. You guys probably know exactly who I'm talking about. She's like very cute, has blonde curly hair, but I really like the style of videos that like they put out. But as far as like taking inspiration from them for my own channel, I don't think I watch anyone where I feel like I want to like copy them, I guess. Not that it would be copying, but I would like want to take inspiration and put it into my channel just because I want my channel to be my own. And yeah, that's just how I kind of feel about that. I am going to start answering the questions that I got on my Instagram page. Megan Annabelle would like to know about affordable lighting and camera. Unfortunately, my camera was not very affordable. I believe I paid $800 for it because of all of the equipment that it came with. I want to say it was around that price range, but I did split it with my dad. But I know that a lot of YouTubers do use those like digital cameras with like the flip up screen. So that might be an affordable option for you. And also the iPhone quality is really good as long as you have good lighting. I guess the affordable lighting that I use is literally free. I just use natural lighting. So wild child big smile would like to know if I have any future plans for my channel. I don't really know what you mean by plans. I don't really have goals for my channel, I guess, because I really like how things are going right now. And if they could just continue, like, that would be awesome. I also don't want to be, like, this huge YouTuber. Like, my goal is to definitely not be on, like, James Charles level like I would don't even think I would have it in me I don't think I would appeal to enough people to like have that type of channel and also that would just be so overwhelming for me I really like the idea of having like a small community which is kind of how things are looking right now and that's like perfect for me but I think it would be really cool when I reach like 20,000 subscribers like that would be really awesome and then also like I do look forward to to in a few months being able to focus a little bit more on YouTube like I'm definitely still going to have my job at Ulta but I will be done with my internship so I'll have a lot more time to film videos and post for you guys so that will just be like really fun. Sila I think is her name. Um, how did your parents react to your YouTube channel? My dad was like begging me for the longest time to start. He's like kind of funny. He like talks about me being YouTube famous like he would really want that but like he jokes about that he like jokes about he's like oh well like when you're YouTube famous like you'll be able to like take care of us and stuff and I'm like okay all right dad so yeah they have had really positive reactions to it it wasn't until recently where they've been like very excited for me like my mom will text me when like I reach like another thousand subscribers when I talk about like my view count and like how much money I'm making from like AdSense, he is like really surprised. And I do talk about that a lot just because like I'm proud of it, you know? Um, I don't know like legally if I can say how much money I make, but the check that I'm getting from YouTube this month is like pretty big. It's basically like a month's rent, which is like all I'll say right now. I don't think I'll make nearly as much money next month, but like that's not a big deal to me. So yeah, that's just how they feel about it. They are excited for me and stuff. Are you serious? Asked, how did you become a Glossier rep? I do get that question like kind of often. Um, it was like about two years ago, I went to New York to visit my friend Chris who used to live here. We used to work, we used to work at Chipotle together and he moved to New York. But I went to visit him and like one of the big things that I wanted to do was go to the Glossier showroom and like spend a ton of money because I never tried Glossier before. And I made a video when I came back talking about like the things that I got from Glossier and like my experience going to the showroom and they saw the video and they emailed me and that was that. Like I was so excited when they emailed me. I do feel like I owe a lot of my success to Glossier. I just feel like my access to new launches and like having like the full Glossier collection, not that they like gave that to me, but I do, since I am a rep, get $30 a month to spend on the site. That's like super helpful, you know, so I can like collect all of the colors and have them available to show to you guys and like product launches, like those types of videos do get a lot of views. So I feel like 
I owe a lot of my like YouTube success to Glossier, but I also don't want me being a rep to like define me, like be a defining factor on my channel because I feel like there are a lot of reps out there that do have that define them and I feel like that would just make it really difficult to create other content not that I don't love making Glossier videos because I love the brand and I know you guys really like those types of videos but um, I like other things too you know Naya wants to know how do you balance YouTube work school social life um, you can take social life out of that. I don't hang out with anybody except for like my boyfriend. And when we hang out, like right now, we do a lot of schoolwork together. So like, I kind of like kill two birds with one stone. And work, I work one day a week right now, which sucks because I really love my job, but because of my internship, it takes up so much of my time. And then YouTube, I have been only filming YouTube videos on the weekend. So today is Saturday and I plan on pumping out like four videos today. Hopefully getting some of those edited today and then I might do a little bit of editing throughout the week. When I don't have my internship anymore, I will have a lot more free time, so. Mina wants to know, what are your fave YouTubers? So I talked about that a little bit earlier. I really like Callie Kaiser. I can't wait for her to like post more often. I really miss her videos. I like Lindsay Rem a lot. I also love, 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 love Samantha Ravindahl. I also really like Alana Davison and I like Raw Beauty Christie a lot. But other than that, as far as like beauty YouTubers go, I don't watch a ton. And then I also really like Kathleen Lights. Oh, Bailey Sarian. I have been obsessed with Bailey Sarian. Like, she is the perfect YouTuber to, like, get ready to, you know? Because she posts those makeup... She posts murder makeup Mondays or Mondays murder makeup. Something, like, with that. So she posts, like, true crime videos and then does her makeup while she does them. And it's just incredible. Like, I love that. I know I watch more YouTubers than that, but I can't really think of any right now. Oh, and then I do keep up with like Aspen and Parker. Like they just had a baby and I keep up with them. I've been watching her for like years though. Super gay. I know that someone's Finsta wants to know about my camera setup. Again, I will link all of my stuff in the bio. So like that's my camera right there and like my tripod and like that's the big window that I film in front of. And then I keep like my brushes right here and then I also just got this like drawer set from Amazon. So like all of the makeup products that I just used in a recent video I put in here so I have like easy access to them while I'm filming and it can like stay kind of neat. And then I'm also filming an ordinary video after this. So I just like collected all my ordinary products and I put it in this drawer so that I could have like it easily accessible and this is just like a towel I have like extra beauty blenders right here a scrunchie and then some makeup wipes so that I just have those like available to me if I need them and then I set up my computer right here and then I can see myself in this like larger viewfinder which makes things really convenient also throughout the video if you were wondering where I got my shirt I will leave it down below I got it from Aria and Bryn my friend owns an online boutique that is really cute and she sells this long sleeve lilac tea so she sells a lot of really cute graphic tees and like other clothes and then I want to answer one more question from song lyrics 56 she asked was it rough for you when you first started out did you struggle with motivation to continue making videos even when you didn't get a lot of views I think that's an important question to answer at times yes but not enough for me to like call it quits like throw the towel and like it like sometimes it would feel not great when I would post a video and like nobody would watch it or like nobody would care because like I work just as hard on my videos as I did like a year ago you know what I mean and like a year ago it felt like nobody was watching but what kept me motivated was the fact that I was still proud of the videos that I was putting out and I still enjoyed making videos and I knew that if I always continued to be proud of the content that I was creating and like make videos that I wanted to make and stuff that people would start watching eventually. So I guess my motivation was just the fact that I enjoyed posting videos and the fact that there was always that possibility that one day like more people would watch. So 
yeah. But anyway, that is it for me today. This video is going to be super long, but I felt like it was important for me to make because I get a ton of questions and people wondering how I started and saying that they like wish that they could start a channel or whatever. And yeah, hopefully this was helpful. If I do get any more questions, like anything different than what I said in this video, I can address that in like a future video, like a future Q&A or you know, like whatever, get ready with me. I decide to film next week. But yeah, hopefully this was helpful to you. Hopefully it wasn't like too long and boring or whatever. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Check out Aria and Brynn to get this super adorable shirt. It's so soft. Like I love it. It's so soft. It's the perfect color. But yeah, go ahead and subscribe if you want to be notified whenever I post a new video. And hopefully I see you next time.